I've never used the Raspberry Pi Pico before, and to make it a more user-friendly experience, I made this Pi Pico breakout board sponsored by PCBWay. The board provides two rows of pins on each side to access all of the Pico pins, including three pins down at the bottom if we need to access the serial wire debug port, and these are all 0.1 inch spaced headers. So the one I assembled has regular male pins that I can plug in DuPont wires to, but I may be using some other switches or controls that have just bare wires, so I chose to also use 0.1 inch spaced screw terminals. And this size of screw terminal doesn't stack end to end very well, so every time there's a new little section of terminals, I just have to jam them in. It's a little crooked, but it works. The footprint for the Pico is dual purpose, so you can put the module directly on here and solder it just like a surface mount component with pads, or I put female 0.1 inch headers here so I can plug the module directly in. And then I can remove it later if I want. For convenience, I put extra power and ground headers down at the bottom, so I have 3.3 volts and USB V bus, and there's a power LED as well as a reset switch, which is connected to the run pin. So when this pin is grounded, the module goes into reset. And that's convenient when we need to hold down the boot cell button while bringing the module out of reset, so that we don't have to unplug it from USB and plug it back in to get into programming mode. We can just hold reset. Since I've never used the Pi Pico, I wanted to just get a demo up and running ASAP, and there's a lot of tutorials with CircuitPython for the Pico, so I decided to install that. And the first thing I wanted to try was emulating a USB keyboard. So by using CircuitPython, there's code and instructions to get this all working already, so I figured this is an easy place to start. So starting from scratch, following tutorials, the first step was to install CircuitPython on the Pico. Go to circuitpython.org and downloads and search for Pico. Then download the UF2 file for the latest stable release. So I'm using major version 7. And I just downloaded this onto a USB stick for convenience. To install CircuitPython on the Pico, we need to get into the bootloader programming function by holding down the boot cell button while bringing the board out of reset and then release the button. So if this module is not on a board with a reset button, that can be achieved by unplugging it from USB, holding down boot cell, plugging it back in and then releasing boot cell. But I can do it with the reset button just by holding boot cell, pressing reset, releasing reset, and releasing boot cell. Now the Pico shows up as a USB drive called rpi-rp2. Now to install CircuitPython, all we have to do is drag that uf2 file over to this main folder on the Pico. Once the uf2 file has been copied to the Pi, it will install CircuitPython and reboot the Pico, and it will show up as a CircuitPy drive. If there's no lib library folder, that folder can be added now, but we need to go get some USB HID library files to use with the keyboard demo that I'm going to try out. After looking at several Adafruit USB keyboard related projects, one of the things we have to do is go get a library file that has an Adafruit USB HID library. And the best way to do that is to go and download the Adafruit CircuitPython library bundle by going to this GitHub area and going to latest release and then choosing the zip file that supports the major Python version that we're using. So in this case I'm going to get the one for version 7 and save that so I can extract it. And here's that library bundle extracted on my other USB drive. So if we go into the library folder, we look for Adafruit HID, and there's keyboard and mouse support. So I want to copy this over to the library folder on the Pi Pico. There's too many files here to fit on the Pico, so I'm only bringing in what I need. And some of these Adafruit examples have a project bundle that you can download, so it'll include the code 
for the project and possibly any of those libraries and then you can drag those into the Pico as needed. But I just wanted to make sure I had the latest correct version of the libraries to support the Python version I'm using. And they recommend using the MU or MU editor for code, but since I'm using an existing file and all we need is the text file, I'm not going to bother installing the code editor just yet. I just want to get this up and running quickly and make sure everything works. I can learn more later. So to get this keyboard circuit working, this code has to be saved on the Pico main folder as file name code.py. So I can just use any old text editor and copy the code from here and paste it into the text editor, then save it into the Pico as code.py. Or I can download this project bundle zip file and copy the code.py file over to the Pico. But for me, I just found it easier to just view this on GitHub. So here's that code. Now if I view raw, this is basically a code.py text file that I can save as. And I'm just going to save it into the circuit.py board directly from here. And through the rest of this project page, there's more info on using the keyboards, how the commands work in the code. But for now, I've got a text editor open. So with the Pico plugged in now, it should be running this code.py file. I'm going to take a DuPont wire connected to ground, and as I just randomly go to different GPIO pins, this should generate some keystrokes or other key commands. So this one is a number three, the next one's a number four, number five, looks like I just did something with speaker volume, there's a G, B, so this seems to be working. And there's an API reference that gives more info about how to use this USB keyboard, including all of the kinds of keys you can do, any of the control keys, and also you can do a USB mouse, and consumer controls like multimedia buttons. So this was an easy and successful first experience with the Pi Pico, and with the convenience of a breakout board, I'll be more inspired to use the Pico in future projects.